Hey guys, welcome back. First of all, happy holidays. Secondly, check out these sweaters. They're really cool. Chris over at Games You Loved hooked it up. They're by Numskull. I'll have a link in the description. There's a bunch of different designs. But what are we talking about today specifically? We're talking about virtual pinball. Will Arcade 1UP enter this market? I think they will. I have no prior knowledge to say that, but I think they will. So my buddy Chris, who runs Rouse Retrospect, was like, look, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to build one right now. So I'm super hyped to see what he came up with. So sit back, relax, and take it away, Chris. Thanks, Ralph. Hey, Retrospectors, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Well, you know, what I've been doing in my time recently has basically been uh, getting into virtual pinball. I know it's all the rage right now because a lot of people are talking about it because of how the, they're selling these things called the Toy Shark. Ah! <laughs> or Toy Shock, whatever, ah! whatever you want to call it. You know, I've been working on a project that's near and dear to my heart. And if I could share it with you, I have built something that uh, is is dedicated to my very favorite pinball of all time. And if you're ready, let's do this. If you haven't met, let me introduce you to Funhouse Pinball. Released by Williams in 1990, Funhouse stars a talking ventriloquist dummy named Rudy that talks to you, taunts you, and even watches the ball as it moves around on the playfield. Two things you may not know about Funhouse is that it was Williams' last pinball to display scores on an alphanumeric display. The second being that the voice of Rudy is done by none other than Ed Boon himself. Yes, that Ed Boon, one of the creators of Mortal Kombat. Get over here! This machine runs a Risen 3 processor with 16 gigs of RAM and an M.2 hard drive. This thing doesn't even need a video card and it runs Mortal Kombat 11. Craziness. I had the graphics printed off at Escape Pod online and I had the speakers mounted on top so as not to mess up the graphics on the upper kick plate. I think it looks pretty good. I'm using extruded buttons in the upper kick plate for start and plunger, as well as I'm using blue lit buttons for the nudge buttons. Using the control panel with the minimalistic design keeps the cabinet what it was designed for, pinball. The yellow flipper buttons use leaf switches to feel as authentic to the original pinball as I could get it. The three pinball emulators I'm currently running are, in my favorite order, Pinball Arcade, where I play Funhouse exclusively and have several titles like Terminator 2, Sword of Fury, and Ghostbusters. Currently I'm sitting at a high score of 74,432,930 points on Funhouse, which I feel is pretty good. What's your highest Funhouse score? Comment below, I'd love to hear. The second pinball emulator of choice is Future Pinball. Though it has several commercial pinball replicas, it also has a ton of custom pinballs like Tron Legacy, Masters of the Universe, Iron Man, and The Dark Knight, which are my favorites. The third pinball emulator is, of course, Pinball FX 2 and 3. Playing Marvel, Jurassic Park, Williams Tables, or South Park, this has the most tables of all of them, though it can get a little pricey to obtain them. I have this at number 3 because I feel like it runs the clunkiest of all of them due to their animations and kinda corny dialogue from the characters on screen. It's beautiful, but feels cartoony in its play mechanics, personally. I did find one issue. I will say, when I was playing Pinball Arcade, you have a choice of selecting DirectX 9 or DirectX 11 tables, which the DirectX 11 looks amazing, but I find that some tables seem to get cut off at the bottom, making it hard to see the flippers. My guess is that there is a setting to pull the video in a little, as the Windows taskbar can be seen on the bottom, too. Alt and Enter used to get rid of it, but it seems to be an issue now for some reason, and I can't get it to go away. If I play the DirectX 9 version, no problems whatsoever, though it's not quite as good looking, but it's still fine. I also want to point out that I'm a huge fan of horror games, and Funhouse, even though bright and inviting, is kind of a low-key horror game itself. Let me show you. The point of Funhouse is to forcefully advance the clock in the Funhouse to 12 midnight. Why, you ask? As the clock nears closer to midnight, Rudy starts to become unhinged and starts becoming mean and antagonistic. You see it in the graphics of the Funhouse, whether it be the back glass or the playfield itself, you start to put together a story that's kind of dark. On the bottom section of the back glass, towards the left, you can see that Rudy and the Funhouse were discovered underground in Kansas. The game itself takes place in Chicago, as seen on the opposite side of the back glass. So it's traveling around, but what is Rudy doing? It's my personal belief that he's kidnapping children and patrons that come to the Funhouse. How do I know this? Look under the stairs of the Funhouse. You can see the eyes of captured individuals. This also plays into the story progression of the game. Once you advance the ball to midnight, this puts Rudy to sleep. Midnight appears to be one of Rudy's weaknesses. From here, you have free run of the funhouse, where Rudy can't see you. By shooting the ball into Rudy's mouth, this not only awakens him, but sets the captured patrons free. This is the symbolism of the purpose of the multi-ball. 
Once the patrons are free, Rudy can't keep track of all the released people and starts becoming overwhelmed, trying to keep people from the secret hiding under the trap door. When you shoot a ball down into the trap door, you hear Rudy scream in terror. As you have found his ultimate secret and weakness. Obviously there's no official ending to the game, but as you can see, it's a fun possible story to play through for a pinball game. So there you have it, another alternative to playing virtual pinball, other than the Toy Shark, or Shock, whatever you want to call it. So if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Retro Ralph, uh, make sure you hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you guys on the next Ralph's Retrospect. See ya. Bye!